Hey y'all and welcome to my very first podcast. I'm so excited to be doing this. Um, I'd love to reintroduce myself. First off, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Tara Jolet and I'm most known for Little Women LA. I was an executive producer as well as an on-screen talent. Um, I've then done things like Dancing with the Stars and other fun shows, but things that are very passionate to me and with purpose, I feel like is, of course, the obvious, disability. And I want to be able to share some of those things where we're making an ability of disability. And I feel like this is the perfect place to do that. And hopefully I can spread more awareness. Now we are on the very last day of September. And September is, for me, most known as Deaf Awareness Month, as well as the one, the only, Hydrocephalus Awareness Month. Now, for the Deaf Awareness Month, I feel like a lot of people didn't realize that it even is deaf awareness. And I think that that's very important to bring awareness to all of these disabilities and really share some of the positive sides of all of these things. Um, I originally started learning sign language when I went to Texas Lions Camp. And basically about 30% of the campers there were either deaf or hearing impaired. And the only way to communicate would be either to learn the language or to write them notes all day. And since you were there for two weeks, you really had an opportunity to learn the language. Um, to me, sign language is really incredible. I remember going to Amsterdam and I always felt like there's an immediate acceptance within the deaf community. And if you go up and say hello and just introduce yourself, 99.9999% of the time. In fact, I've never had a negative experience, but 99% of the time they embrace you and are grateful that a hearing person is even trying to sign. And I remember going to Amsterdam and see here, I was in just like a regular coffee shop. <laughs> and I remember seeing this couple talking back and forth to each other. And I said, I need to go introduce myself. So I went to introduce myself and they couldn't understand what I was saying. And then I couldn't understand what they were saying. And so I was like, okay, well, when it, when all else fails, fingerspell. And so I started fingerspelling and they <laughs> whipped out a notepad and said, we are Dutch. And right then and there, I realized that ASL is American Sign Language. Not everybody in the world speaks American Sign Language. And every language has their own language. So, <laughs> dun -da -da -da, learn something new every day, Tara. Something that I found this month that I thought was really interesting is British Sign Language, BSL, is different than American Sign Language. There are very similar words, but the majority, a lot of it is different which I find to be interesting because in the American English language, all that's truly different, maybe a few words are different, but all that's truly different is an accent. So to hear that there is such a vast difference between, forgive me if it's not called BSL, but I'm pretty sure it's BSL, BSL versus ASL, British Sign Language versus American Sign Language, I found it to be fascinating. Um, <laughs> uh, I didn't know that uh, bugger off when I went to London meant basically to F off. So that was good. I'm glad I was told that by like a three-year-old. Anywho, all right. So it, Deaf Awareness Month was the month of September. Now hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is definitely dear and near to me because of my daughter, Penelope. I did not know anything about hydrocephalus prior to being told when she was in my womb that she had water on the brain and that was also known as hydrocephalus. Um, some, some people are inquiring hydra syphilis. No, it's hydrocephalus. And I feel like a lot of people know nothing about hydrocephalus, even though it is the number one brain surgery in children in America, the number one. More children have surgery due to hydrocephalus than any other surgery when they're born. 
And when I found out that Penelope had hydrocephalus, it scared me to my core, just being honest, because I know everything about being little and I know everything. Well, I don't know everything, but I feel confident about being little. And when it came to hydrocephalus, I was clueless. Come to find out, Tanya in Little Women LA, um, whom you may know, has hydrocephalus. She also has a shunt and she's had it most of her life. Um, She wasn't born with hydrocephalus. She actually ended up having to go to the doctor when she was around, I think she said around the age of 12 or 13. Don't quote me on that. Um, And that's when they discovered hydrocephalus for Tanya. Now, if you look up hydrocephalus, it is the most horrifying images and stories and people just pouring their hearts out with pain of their experience and how your child will not succeed in life and how you are going to basically have to care for your child like for the rest of their lives and Sometimes it mentions like a lower life expectancy and all of this false information that if you just Google and I feel like, or not Google specifically, if you just do a (laughs) internet search, let's clarify that. So I feel like after I was a part of Hydrocephalus Association, it really opened up my eyes to knowing that we were going to be okay. And while there is still no cure for hydrocephalus, there are people living their lives completely healthy and not affected by their shunt, not affected by hydrocephalus. They're just more aware of their symptoms when they get ill. And it can happen, honestly, at any stage of life, which I also found to be very interesting. Um, It's even more common when it comes to if you're getting older and you have dementia or um, any other type of brain issues, then you're more likely to have hydrocephalus. I found a lot of cases in spina bifida as well um, that also went hand in hand with hydrocephalus. And the wildest part is I found a lot of little people that had hydrocephalus and I never knew this before. I never knew that it was not common, but not unheard of in the little person community. And I think that if we're not going to be talking about those kinds of medical issues that can occur with different medical conditions, then we need to open that book. We need to be able to say, I can talk about it confidently and not be scared because there's a lot of people that are scared out there, just like I was when I first started hearing about hydrocephalus. And I think it's really important to start bringing that awareness, bringing that conversation to the table. And I hope that I can do more of that here, more of that here, even if it's something that doesn't affect my life personally. Now, this is the last day of the hydrocephalus awareness. I will be doing a walk next month in Orange County for hydrocephalus, and I hope that you will join me. I will keep you updated on this channel with all of those details. Let's keep going as I check my teeth for some lipstick. Okay, (sighs) next month. AKA tomorrow, October 1st, marks the day of many different awarenesses. I would say the nation is most aware of next month, AKA tomorrow, (laughs) um, October, being breast cancer awareness. Breast cancer awareness is a huge, huge thing across America. Um, If you don't know somebody with breast cancer, it's very rare. I would say if you don't know somebody with breast cancer, you've known somebody that had breast cancer, you know somebody that was affected by breast cancer, it's been in your environment. And I feel with that, if it hasn't been in your environment, then you know celebrities that have had it. Um, Christina Applegate is one of my role models in life. And I know that sounds really bizarre, but I really look up to her and her message and her 
her energy on life and the way that she handles everything. It's really remarkable to me. Okay, so I want to talk about breast cancer awareness and everything that has led up to that. Now, I had a scare back in, I don't know, it was about um, three, four years ago. It actually, I take my son. So it was a, my son is, is now five. It was about four years ago. And after I had done, finished, kaput, uh, breastfeeding him, three months later, you're able to get a mammogram. And I had one and it had a lump. And it was one of the scariest moments I would say I've had in a really long time. Um, I feel like it's something to be very um, vocal about because to this day, I'm going to give an example. So today, or this, actually these last, this last month I've tried, um, I'm full disclosure, I feel a lump in my right breast and I am confident in saying I have no idea if it is the exact same thing that I experienced five years ago. Now, five years ago, it was a blocked milk duck and that led to a benign, it, it was non-cancerous. So I feel like, okay, maybe it is a similar situation. Now, let me explain. I have called the same place to get a mammogram that I did f- four or five years ago and they stated that I needed to get a doctor's note. Now, when I called my OB, my OB stated that their next appointment was in over two months. And when I then was like, okay, I called back to the breast center and they said, look, we just need a doctor's note and then you're able to have a breast exam. I said, okay. So I went to urgent care and I said, can you please give me a referral for a breast exam? Now, mind you, I have a PPO. I have a PPO, which usually means you're in no problem. You don't need a referral. You don't need one of these doctor's notes. And when I went in, I I said, okay, well, I need, I have this mass in my right breast and I'd like to have it checked out. I need a mammogram. I should have been having regular mammograms, but because I've been breastfeeding and COVID and these are just things that I've put on the back burner and now we're up to date, let's get her started. So just summing you all up, I then got the doctor's note from urgent care that said um, right mass in patient's right breast um, and uh, need, need full exam within seven days. That's what the doctor's note stated. I called the exam (laughs) doctor mammogram place back and said, I have a doctor's note. Can I send it to you? And they said, "Um, what kind of diagnostic did they say that you needed? And I read them the exact doctor's note and they said, that's not good enough. We can't accept that. I'm like, I was a patient of yours before and this is not how people are supposed to be able to have these mammograms. Like if we're able, if we're wanting to prevent breast cancer and if we're wanting to prevent these things from happening, then there needs to be an easier way for doctors to open up the doors and say, we want you to have an exam because we want you to be safe. And right now there's not one. So then I said, okay, forget it. Forget I asked. Let me, uh, like, I I don't know what to do. What am I going to go back to urgent care and say specifically, can you request this specific note? The person on the phone never requested that before. It was just get a doctor's note. So then I called another breast um, mammogram location and simply asking, hi, I would love to get a breast exam. They stated the exact same thing that my original doctor had stated that I had been to multiple times. I called a third one. They stated the exact same thing. I don't get how getting a mammogram is something that is so difficult when we are told regularly, when you hit the age of 40, you need a mammogram yearly. And that currently isn't as easy as one would think, even with a PPO. 
So I will keep you updated on that, but right now we are in limbo because I don't know what we are going to do. I'm going to possibly go back to urgent care and get a specific doctor's note and go through that whole process again because it's the fastest way I can get that referral. Or somebody will hear my plea and call me back with <laughs> hope. <laughs> And if you are experiencing these exact same things, I would love to hear your experience in the comments below. Um, I think that it's really important that we make everyone aware of these same details. Now, breast cancer, October, let's go. Moving forward from breast cancer, October is the most important awareness month for me because it is Dwarfism Awareness Month. And Dwarfism Awareness Month to me is so valid because my entire family, immediate family, has dwarfism. My brother has dwarfism. My husband, all three children of ours have dwarfism. While my parents are both of average stature, there's no dwarfism in my um, ancestry. It is still something that is very powerful and very valid to who I am and what I um, feel is one of my strengths. I feel like a lot of people feel like, oh, I'm so sorry you had a little person. You, you know, they must have told my mom that a million times. And my mom handled it like, why? She's short. And that's about it. And I feel like if every parent could have that kind of mindset, they would feel powerful about moving forward with their child with a disability and no longer thinking that their child necessarily had a disability, but an ability. This disability has given me every opportunity that I've had in life. And I've learned to look at it on the positive side of things rather than dwelling on, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I can't, I can't become a basketball player. I can't be a commercial pilot. At least I don't think because of all of the fixtures up top. Um, but I can be a doctor. I can be a lawyer. I mean, maybe not now for me personally, I'm just stating little people in general have this opportunity where their minds are just as fluent and progressive as anyone else's for the majority <laughs> um, in this world. And uh, parents sometimes feel that because of their physical disability, they also have a mental disability. And that's not always the case. Um, so <laughs> I looked online because I felt like, okay, well, who's going to be talking about Dwarfism Awareness Month? You know, I want to know. And the first thing that I looked up was I looked up um, Awareness Month for October, okay? And I was kind of baffled. I was, I was actually very baffled at everything that wasn't mentioned. Nobody cares about little people. <laughs> Except for maybe the founder, you know, Billy Barty is the founder of, of Little People of America. But I feel like there's so many people that don't really care about or know about little people. And hopefully we can change that. I want to change that. Um, so the first ones that came up were um, whathealth.com. There was no mention of dwarfism, nothing like that. Um, healthline, healthline.com. It gave every kind of awareness. Of course, breast cancer, you know, it's also um, Down Syndrome Awareness Month. It's also Disability Employment Awareness Month. Um, in Canada, I found out it's Autism Awareness Month, but nothing was mentioned about dwarfism on healthline.com, okay? Wellcoa, W-E-L-C-O-A.org. You would think, hey, what do you have for me? And again, nothing is mentioned. Okay, so BHG was one of, like, as I'm going page by page, BHG, Better Homes and Gardens. It gave like a whole list of all of these things that I guess were Instagram postable for you. Nothing. Nationaltoday.com. Nothing. Now, finally, lpaonline.org shows up and LPA, Little People of America Online.org, is exactly 
the first and only person that I'm currently seeing in my search engine for Dwarfism Awareness Month. So I'm like, somebody's bound to be talking about this. Like nobody is talking. Nobody knows that this is a thing for October. How is this possible? Finally, then I saw, I, I looked up um, National Today, National Today. So on National Today's website, it lists every single day on there. It, it lists kick butt day. It lists fetch day for dogs, but it doesn't list dwarfism awareness. It is one in 30,000 children are born with dwarfism. One in 30,000. I, I don't know if one in 30,000 people care about fetch day. No offense. I'm just stating my opinion. Now, when it comes to, I finally found one. I was looking on my third page of searches and this was event guide, the event guide.com. Okay. So I'm not trying to be ungrateful because I'm just grateful that they mentioned us in number 83 of hundred plus. But in this, if we were behind bat appreciation, <laughs> bat like that and cheese month <laughs> and cookie month L look i mean while those are valid things to be aware of i mean i would think that we would fall a little bit higher than 83 especially since every other disability was top of their list so that was kind of heartbreaking, but I'm grateful that we're on that list because that was the only one that I saw in three search engine pages. And I, I went through everything, everything. Now I feel like it's very important that we are aware that dwarfism is something that not everybody understands. And it's not always super easy to throw around a stool and life is going to be jolly. Like my brother and I had very fortunate lives, but I don't think that every single situation is like that. And I don't think that everybody that has a little person feels that even though they necessarily have a little person, that their life is going to be okay. And it will. There are so many resources out there other than if you look up <laughs> the way that I looked up, but there are so many resources out there that can help you when you are having a little person, when you've met a little person, when you're the physician for a little person. I feel like there's so many doctors out there that know nothing about achondroplasia or which is the most common type of dwarfism or any type of dwarfism. We stumbled on a needle in the haystack and after I'd say we went to six different pediatricians. We went to one that was close to our home and said, look, we just need to get a general so that we can get some cold medicine. This was um, about two years ago for Penelope. And right when we went in, she immediately knew that she had achondroplasia. She immediately knew that Joe was a different type. She had never, she was honest about everything. She had never dealt with pseudoachondroplasia, but then she did her research and she knows so much more that so many doctors don't give the time to enlighten themselves about their patients. And it just gave such great bedside manner, knowing that she not only was knowledgeable about achondroplasia, but she's now knowledgeable about two different types of little people's, achondroplasia and pseudoachondroplasia. And I was in awe by her knowledge. It wasn't like she just read the cliff notes. She was very well um, educated when it came to um, our type of conditions. And I feel like that's so important nowadays because there's so many people that, again, just kind of want you to come in, want to get their checkup payment from your insurance company and move along. I want to share next month, October, tomorrow, <laughs> and 
thereon all of the ways that disability is not a, a disability. Dwarfism is not something to be scared about. And I want to share more awareness for dwarfism and making it more aware to all of these sites and more, more sites than just the ones that I listed, because I feel like so many people aren't even aware of that there is a awareness month for dwarfism. And with all of the shows that have gone on, I mean, there there are shows about like on t TLC alone, I believe, has had over seven different programs. Um, Lifetime has had over, I know this from my own experience, has had over 10 spinoffs of Little People shows from the Little, P Little Women franchise. And when it comes to even Animal Planet, Animal Planet had... Um, a man who, no matter how my emotional feelings are towards some people, but Pit Boss was a part of that um, channel. So there's different channels. Discovery Channel has had shows about little people. There are so many different channels that have shared the awareness of little people, and yet it is so foreign online. And I want to try our best to make that more aware and make that more positive to share that we not only have a disability, but it's an ability. Okay, so that was a lot to talk about today. And I hope that you enjoyed this crazy message. And hopefully we can all um, enjoy where this podcast is going to be taking us. I'm going to be doing lives. I'm going to be doing um, <laughs> with you. I'll be taking questions from you directly. And hopefully we can make this a fun little adventure. I look forward to seeing more of all of you. Thank you for tuning in. And if you stay to the end, I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful. All right, guys, it's going to be a great week. I'm going to get my exam. It's going to be a great week. I'm putting it into the universe. It's here. All the best to you and the ones you love. Bye.